Hello and welcome to What's Going On. I'm Chris Howe in for Lynn Hayes. And joining me today is the director of the Potter's House Counseling Center, Dr. Natasha Gr Stewart Gresham. Doctor, welcome to Natasha. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. So excited to be here. Absolutely. And yeah, you know, I, I stumbled on that name a little bit because you recently got married and, uh, you know, got a new name there. Yes, yes. I am Dr. Gresham now, and I am so excited and thankful for that. Absolutely. That's a wonderful thing. All right. So as we get into this, first of all, tell us about the mission of the Potter's House Counseling Center. Well, the mission is simply to serve our community for so long, the faith-based community or communities of color did not see mental health as an issue that affected us. And that is so untrue. And I like to break down mental health very simply because people get caught up in depression or bipolar or chronic mental illnesses, right? Yeah. But I like to break down mental health because there's a difference between mental health and mental illness. All of us have mental health. All of us do not have a mental illness. So mental health deals with how you live, how you love, and how you laugh. That wow. is what mental health is. And we all have mental health. I love it. I love it. And when you talk about the faith-based community really embracing mental health, I mean, let's talk about it. You've been at the Potter's House now over 10 years. 17 years. 17 years. So again, when you talk about a commitment, thanks. Hats off to Bishop Jakes and the team for really just seeing the importance and then having this in place. But also let's talk about the fact that, again, it's my understanding that folks do not have to be members of the Potter's House or just to, to receive services. Absolutely. And this is what I love and what attracted me initially 17 years ago is because Bishop Jakes is such a visionary and he knew uh, our mental health, our emotional health is so co co uh, connected to our spiritual health, to our everyday life. And so he wanted to provide a service, not only to the members of the church, but our community. And so services, you do not have to uh, look like us. You do not have to believe like us. You just have to want services from us. You do not have to attend our services. There are people, and, and I say this, uh, it's a two-edged sword. I'm happy about it, but I'm also disappointed about it. 80% of our clientele are not our members, okay? So we're trying to get our members in, in those counseling sessions as well, but a lot of our uh, members are not, or our clients are not our members. So you do not have to look like us. And the other thing is our services are free. So you're going to see a licensed professional counselor in the state of Texas for free. Now we do ask for a donation if you're able to donate, but we do not turn anybody away. Anybody that wants services can get services. And the thing that we did about two years ago, or maybe three years now, is during the pandemic, you know, we all were shut down, we all were sheltered in place. And I knew that it was affecting people's mental health. So now all our services are virtual. So you can see us in the privacy of your house, uh, in your office, at work, whatever makes sense for you, you can access us. And then we added another component, with, component, which is life coaching. So if you live outside the state of Texas, you can receive life coaching from us. It is not therapy, but it is life coaching. So now the Center for Counseling and Behavioral Health at the Potter's House, we see people in 33 states and 13 countries. Wow, you said a lot there. Okay, first and foremost, you do not have to be a member. You don't have to believe uh, like members of the Potter's House to receive the services absolutely free. If you're just joining us, you're listening to what's going on. I'm Chris Howe, and I'm talking today to Dr. Gresham, who is the director of the Potter's House Counseling Center in Dallas. But again, as she just pointed out, the sessions are done virtually. Life coaching is done virtually. So you don't even have to be within the Dallas community in order to receive the services. Dr. Gresham, a question I'd have for you is, do you feel that we made any headway in terms of uh, really eliminating the stigma associated with receiving therapy and, and uh, counseling? I think we've come a long way from uh, my generation growing up to the present generation, but we still have ways to go. Um, and I'm just so proud that, you know, millennials and people like 40 and under are more open to therapy now. And therapy has become mainstream. It's not this hidden thing that you do in secret anymore. And we have celebrities and um, people of influence talking about 
mental health and that they have a counselor and they go to therapy and promoting therapy. And it was a whole campaign about it's okay not to be okay. So I think therapy, mental health, counseling has come out the closet and is in front stream. But a lot of people, especially people of faith or people of color, have not seen people that look like them or represent them in the therapy space. So we are trying to let people know you can get a counselor of color, you can get a female counselor, you can get a, a male counselor of color, you can get a faith-based counselor. You can get a counselor that identifies with your belief system and how you show up in the world. So I think there's some more barriers to overcome in therapy, uh, but I think we've made great strides and I'm proud of that. Good stuff, good stuff. And so when you talked about a moment ago, you know, again, when you talk about members and non-members coming to receive the services, let's talk about the whole confidentiality piece, piece of this, because I think, you know, yes, we've overcome some of the stigma associated with it, but there's still a little bit out there, as we just pointed out. So talk about the confidentiality that you guys offer to those who come in to uh, receive services from you all. And thank you. That is such a crucial piece. And I think even going virtual now has added to the level of comfort because nobody sees you going in and out of a physical building right? It is all done virtually through, you know, your computer or your, your smartphone, your tablet. So it eliminates because for a lot of our members, they didn't want to be seen coming into the church and going down to the, the counseling center. So everything is confidential. And I tell people, it's not about my job at the Potter, Potter's house. It's about my integrity and my profession. I do not report to Bishop. I do not report to uh, other executive staff. Everything that's in done in the counseling center is confidential. It is strictly between you and your counselor unless you sign a written release. Of course, there's safeguards. Now, if you're suicidal or homicidal, we have an obligation to report that. But outside of that, everything that you discuss with your counselor is uh, confidential. And I have so many people that will come up to me and say, hey, I'm I'm at the counseling center. I see so-and-so. And I'm, I have no idea. And I'm like, well, that's great. Are they doing a great job? And they're really genuinely shocked that I don't know. Um, even though I'm the director, I do not look at my staff members' uh, caseloads. I do not look at their, their clients. I just know they're busy, um, but I can't pinpoint individuals. So we pride ourselves on confidentiality and keeping your information safe. That's extremely important because, again, it allows folks to feel the fr freedom to be able to come in and get the services that they need. So thank you guys so much for doing that. So you, let's talk about this. I mean, we're in Texas. I, I And the other day, I just happened to look up while in the gym. I look up on the screen in there, and I see that there's a study that has recently been done uh, associating uh, heat, the outside temperatures, with anger. Can you yes. speak to that and how that plays a role in, in, in right. our emotions and, and attitudes? And in Texas, that's very important to know, right? <laughs> yes. uh, because these temperatures have been going and climbing and we haven't really hit um, the high point yet. But absolutely, environment affects your temperament, okay? And so heat, not only anger, but exhaustion, irritability, um, dehydration, all of that, a lot of times people can show up and people don't understand this about how the body works. Your mental health is so connected to your physical health. So if you're in a hot room or outside playing, um, even playing like basketball, say, you know, guys on the court playing basketball, it's competitive. So your emotions are already heightened because everybody wants to win, right? Then you factor into heat. Then you haven't been drinking your water, right? So now you're agitated. And it lends to the fact that you're easily offended. So when you see that fight break out on the court, it's not always just because of the trash talking. Sometimes the heat impacts our ability to make good decisions. When you're dehydrated, you can actually hallucinate. You can hear things that you did that weren't said. You can see things all from just dehydration. Okay. So it affects your mental health. So uh, when you, you got to be careful, it say, am I hot? Am I hungry? Am I tired? Those are the three things that you need to check on when you start feeling agitated, angry, uh, irritable. Am I hot? Am I hungry? Am I rested? 
And we all know even rest, right? When we don't get enough sleep, when we don't take care of our bodies, we're more irritable. We have more aggression. So all of that is mental health. That's why I say mental health is how you live, how you love, and how you laugh. Wow. Yeah. I mean, I'm telling you, man, when I saw that, I thought, yeah, we certainly need to talk about that, particularly here in Texas. I mean, it's hot throughout our nation right now, but uh, we haven't even reached August yet here in Texas. So we've got a little ways to go. So let's talk about this then. I guess, uh, what do you, what are the signs that, you know what? Yeah, I may be feeling a little agitated. I may be feeling even a little down right now. What are the signs that says, you know what? I really need to pick up the phone and I need to call Natasha uh, and her team and get into counseling. One, signs are life is lifing. That's what I tell people. When they, I get this question, everybody needs a counselor. It's no particular sign. If you are doing life, life is hard, especially coming out of a pandemic. There was a lot of loss. There was a lot of grief. Um, there was a lot of um, changes in your routines. So all of us have been hit with something traumatic. We need counseling. We need a safe space to process how we're feeling. COVID challenged our connectedness, our ability to um, isolate. And a lot of people were stuck with people they may not get along with, okay? And you had diversions before, now everything was removed. So now how am I functioning with the people that I'm locked in space with? How am I functioning? How do I view myself? there's a loss of control. You would have people fighting over wearing masks. It wasn't about wearing the mask. It was about the idea of control, being forced to do something, right? So people need counseling. People need a safe space. So if you feel yourself feeling like nobody understands me, nobody, I don't have anybody to communicate with. One of the first things God said to Adam is, it's not good for man to be alone. Well, he wasn't alone. He was in the garden with all the animals that he named, but there was no one for him to communicate with. So what God really was saying, it's not good to be in isolation. It's not good not to have somebody to connect with who can understand you because as beautiful as the animals were, they couldn't truly understand him and he couldn't truly understand them, right? But another human that he got pulled from his rib, from his side, they could have communication. That is what a therapist does for you. They provide communication in a safe place that is not judgmental, that is not telling you a bunch of do's and don'ts, but is listening to you and helping you to process what has happened in your life and why you think the way you think and how can we better aid you in your thinking process and in your doing process. Wow, I love it. Okay, so how can I get in contact with you? So the, the fastest and quickest way to get in contact with us is by email. You will get an automated response. So if you email counseling information, one word, counseling information at tdjakes.org, counseling information at tdjakes.org, you will get an automated response. If you follow those prompts in that email, you will receive services, whether that's life coaching or within the state of Texas, counseling. So wow. if, you're, if you're old school, you don't have an email, you can call a number. The number is 214-333-6483. Once again, that number is 214-333-6483. All right. And if you're just tuning in, you're listening to What's Going On. I'm Chris Howell, and I'm talking today with Dr. Gresham, the director of the Potter's House Counseling Center here in Dallas. Uh, Dr. Gresham, in the minute or so that we have left, let's talk about this, because many times folks don't want to start counseling because they're thinking, wow, I don't want to start it because that means I'm going to be doing counseling forever. But that's not necessarily the case. I mean, you can start and stop as often as you would like, is my understanding. Is that correct? Absolutely. Absolutely. I have clients that come and they might be in counseling for three months you know, and then they take a break and then another challenge happens because life is lifing and they might come back a year from now. So don't think that counseling is this thing that you have to do for the rest of your life. Like every week, I'm going to go talk to somebody. Now I do have long-term clients that that works for them, that they do come every two weeks and they've been coming for years. So it's up to you and your therapist. You will decide. And this is the other thing. I like to empower our clients. You are driving the ship. Okay. This is your life. 
Okay, we take directives from you. Now we will suggest, well, I think maybe you need another session, but if you don't feel comfortable with that, if you're like, no, nah, I think I'm good, then you can do that. But therapy is not one size fits all. So you figure out with your counselor how you proceed. And this is the other thing because I have people all the time that say, I went to counseling, I really didn't like the therapist, so I didn't do it, okay? Listen, everybody's not a perfect fit. OK, so if you know you want counseling or therapy and you meet with a therapist and it's not a good fit, don't quit counseling. Change your therapist. You are allowed to do that. And I'm empowering you to do that. I think that was a very important point because you like you, I've heard folks say that same thing. Uh, so, you know what? I think many times though we throw out the what they say, the baby with the bathwater, maybe not the best analogy, exactly. but. Uh, you know, again, change therapists. Don't stop the counseling, but just simply change your therapist. Well, Dr. Gresham, thank you so much for uh, taking the time to do this. I think it's going to be a huge help uh, to a lot of people. So I really appreciate you for doing it. Thank you. Thank you for having me. All right. And to our listeners, please take advantage of the resources available to you and continue to listen to what's going on.